Hey, everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your identity? I am Mark Laskowski. And thank you. Of, um... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say thank you for joining the show, but it, if you're going to introduce the characters you've done, that makes my job easier. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm going to let you do that, because I'm sure there's a number that I'll probably forget. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to be fair, before we get to the anime side, I'd actually like to take maybe a DeLorean or a phone booth time machine, whichever one you prefer, go back in time and ask you what got you into acting. What got me into acting? Mm-hmm. Uh, originally, it was probably my sister. I have a sister who's uh, eight years older than I am, and uh, I would have to go to see her uh, act in the high school shows. And I fell in love with it. I was in my first play. I was in The Wizard of Oz, The Tin Man, in sixth grade. Oh, that's and, cute. And uh, pretty much loved it ever since. And so did you pursue it in school, or did you wait until you were graduated and you hit the ground running? What happened next? Well, what happened more quickly for me was I was more a singer ever than I ever was an actor. You could probably call me a crappy actor, but if you call me a crappy singer, I'll be offended. <laughs> 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 so I was, uh, let's see, uh, in, after elementary, in elementary school, actually, I started uh, my first uh, professional choir. I was in the uh, Parma Boy Choir, Parma, Ohio, and that, which eventually turned into the Ohio Boy Choir. And I was with them for about four years until my voice cracked. And then uh, it was the end of the uh, boy soprano days. <laughs> and I, then from there, when I went to high school, I did all the shows in high school, and I was in all the show choirs. And basically, that's probably where the acting bug took hold, and I stayed with it ever since. Well, girls are kind of lucky in that sense because our, our voices don't change so drastically, so that must have been kind of obnoxious. That's true. That's true. But at the same time, uh, uh, men age better typically than women do. As far Well, it doesn't matter what men look like when they age is what I meant to say. I don't mean it's not too sexist, but... <laughs> But, you know, I mean, you could be John, you can be as big as John Goodman and still get parked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's true. I always actually hear it's more difficult for women because, you know, they, they have to take better care of, like, oh, zits and makeup and the big boobs and the big butt. And the and and the, yeah, and the competition is much, much higher. I mean, I went, to, uh, I was on, uh, fortunate enough to get the tour of Oklahoma. I was on the uh, first national tour of Oklahoma um, in 2004. And uh, the audition process was just really eye-opening, going up to New York City and sitting in that audition room when all the girls were there were all, you know, perfect blondes, stretching in their dance outfits, and I was just sitting there in my jeans. You know, I knew I had to do a dance combination, but, you know, as far as dancing goes, I can move, but I don't have to do any, you know, high kicks or I don't do any lifting of other dancers or anything like that. So it's much, I think it's much, much harder for women in the acting field than it is for men. And this is why I stay in radio. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I have there the face go. for radio, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's but, not nice. You shouldn't say things like that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I still can't even apply eyeliner properly, okay? So I'm just going to stick behind the computer screen. But, <laughs> but in terms... I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You're saying... In terms of voiceover, how did you get into that? Actually, um, that was all very lucky. Uh, I got into ADV right at the right time, right when they were still having open calls, right before they got um, as big as they did. Uh, and a friend of mine, uh, John Grimion, uh, said, hey, they're having these voiceover auditions. Why don't you come audition? I said, yes. And that was when I got uh, Masters of Mosquito. And that was the first thing I did. Very nice. Uh, I don't even remember what year that was. Ninety six, seven, somewhere in that neighborhood. I, I, I'll be honest. I was probably just getting into anime at that age, so I wouldn't be able to probably. tell you. I was probably okay. about five or six. All right. Well, we'll get <laughs> let one of the super fans figure that out then. Yes, definitely. <laughs> And now, were you intimidated by the process? Because voice acting, I hear from a lot of people, is difficult if you just did acting to begin with. Really? 
Yes. I think that uh, voice acting is probably the easiest for somebody who's had acting experience. Really? Why do you say that specifically? Well, I, I'm more theatrically trained. So I've, I've been on stage a lot more than I've been. I've don't, I haven't really broken into film that much. I, you know, I've got a couple film credits and things like that, but maybe, maybe, maybe I have a face for voiceover. I don't know. But, <laughs> but so now it, I don't feel so I mean, bad. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to the process of, I mean, theater, theater takes generally about four months of work for a show. Whereas voiceover, you walk in, they hand you the script. No, they don't even hand you the script anymore. It just comes up on the screen. You read what's on the screen. You try and get a basic, basic idea of what the plot is, and you get a, you know, an idea or inspiration for the character's voice if it, if it's necessary, or if the, if the producer doesn't just tell you what to, you know, what to do, and you're done. You do it, and you're, you're done. You go home. <laughs> All done in like an hour, two hours, depending on how long the session is. Well, I assume because you've had, you know, musical training that it's easier to dub. I hear it's very rhythmic. It can be. It depends on the system that uh, the person's using. Because I've had, uh, you know, there's like the click track where you're trying to match up to the, to the lip flaps and all that sort of thing. And then there's there's also times when I've gone in with different producers and they just, you know, just have you do whatever you do and then they have the engineer just shrink it and match it to the lip flaps that way speed it up or cut it or whatever yeah nowadays pro tools can do anything i hear <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much so and so you've never really been nervous in in the booth before nervous no i haven't honestly <laughs> maybe a couple times like if i was auditioning for something and you know somebody was you know intimidating uh, uh uh greenfield can be kind of intimidating to work with every now and then he he gets he has he has uh some time getting stuff out of you sometimes and he can get a little uh, over the top <laughs> threatens but, uh, your family like, no i'm kidding <laughs> threatens your family <laughs> to get the right voice out no <laughs> exactly 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 <laughs> But I think in some cases that would be helpful, especially if you were like, it was an emotional scene or they're screaming or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, certainly, certainly. I mean, probably the, the most difficult thing to do, uh, at least uh, speaking of Greenfield, there was one uh, scene where I was being tortured and my family was in the other room. And that was, that was painstakingly hard to do. That was really difficult to do. I really don't want to go through that one again. <laughs> Oh, wow. I guess it's a quinky dink that I said threaten your family, but you've actually had to act that. Um. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. That was in uh, Noir. I was a torture suspect. Noir was a weird one. That was just two girls going around shooting everybody. <laughs> well, I, I do hear that, you know, screaming at the screen and getting your emotions out does help you feel relieved after a session sometimes. Yeah, it, it can be cathartic in some cases, certainly, yeah. You're just all upset one day, traffic sucked, and it's just like, ah, and you get to punch people in the in the booth. I think that, that would well, be fun. Well, unfortunately, you, have to, you kind of have to store that up because, I mean, it's not an everyday kind of thing that I'm in the studio. <laughs> so I have to store that up for a couple of months at a time before I get called in and get to release all that. So i got to be careful as, as how much I'm holding back. <laughs> Well, you know, you could always write a diary of all those bad moments, and then right before you, you go into could. the booth, you could read those bad of, moments. <laughs> that's still a lot of energy put into negative thoughts, so I'd rather, I'd rather just stay away from that. <laughs> that's true. You'd rather party. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Now, one show that I want to ask specifically about, because the listeners will probably, you know, go after me with pitch tor uh, pitchforks and all that fun stuff, uh, <laughs> is uh, High School of the Dead. Uh, could you tell us what character you play? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> it was Hirano, I believe, was his name. Yes. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> do you remember anything about the character that you can tell us? I remember him? liking him a lot because I, I, he was just one of those cool kind of, because he looked like me. He's one of the few characters I've played that I actually kind of look similar to. I mean, I was the chubby kid in high school that was kind of nerdy that nobody really paid attention to unless I was on stage doing something. And I also had the very mechanical, scientific MacGyver sort of background as well. 
So I was the kind of nerd that, you know, made a lot of the props and did all that kind of stuff. So I could see my, I could definitely see myself in that role as going into the shop, putting together a gun, start plastering some zombies. <laughs> Now, the cool thing, I think, with High School of the Dead, because you see zombies everywhere in Western media, especially video games and things like that. So True. it must have been interesting to see it see it in anime from an Eastern perspective. Or Western? J- Japanese perspective. Let's just go with that. <laughs> you mean seeing the Japanese take on the zombie movie? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, essentially, yes. Hmm. I guess I hadn't really thought about that in too much detail. I guess the zombie did go from us to them, and we got the Godzilla and all the stuff from them. Is that what you're basically That's getting That's true. At? Yes. We did kind of swap. <laughs> 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 not necessarily a bad thing, but it's interesting. No, no, I'm not, no, I wasn't judging it either way. I think it's interesting to see, though, um, how, how, you know, a, a Japanese um, studio will perceive, like, a zombie movie, essentially. Yeah. And put it into their their own way. So I, I, I would just think that series would just be fun because you, you're destroying people. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, it was, it was a blast. I got to use my, you know, all different kinds of uh, voices, like my Clint Eastwood voice and a few other things. It was really nice. My my expertise, if 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 anybody doesn't know this, is, is um, I guess I can say this, ball pain. Anytime that anybody gets, gets it in the nuts, it's usually, they usually call me. That's my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not based off a of personal experience. <laughs> no, I think it goes back to my that goes back to my older sister again. Her being eight years older than me, she tortured me a lot, so I had all kinds of different noises to <laughs> call attention to the pain I was in. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel better, I have a brother that's eleven years older than me, and I remember being thrown into the pool, and he would yep, purposely yep, like yep. jump on the trampoline and launch me into yep, the air. Yep. I got my my share of Indian burns. Uh, I don't know if you've ever gotten flying lessons. That's quite painful. That's one I like to inflict on on the kids whenever they uh, they annoy me too much. <laughs> now, while we re- reminisce about our painful sibling <laughs> memories, we're going to take a short break here on ninety one point eight The Fan. But don't go anywhere because he's not. Hopefully, <laughs> so keep it tuned to your favorite station. Ninety one point eight The Fan is like Kevin Butler, and you know it. 918 The Fan is like Ridge Racer! 91.8 The Fan is like Rock Shot. 91.8 The Fan is like making a sandwich. 91.8 The Fan is like finally getting that sandwich from Sarah Lane. 91.8 The Fan is like Dark Phoenix vs. Trisha! 91.8 The Fan is like playing in the ball pen in the play place at your local unspecified fast food restaurant. Except that instead of balls, they're Nagato plushies. 918 The Fan is like developers, 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 developers. 918 The Fan is like getting both versions of Pokemon for free. 91.8 The Fan is like an eargasm for your mind. 91.8 The Fan is like Buster Wolf. 91.8 The Fan is awesome. Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan, and you're in my corner, and my special guest is still in the corner. Are you still alive? Uh, yes. Okay, good to know. I would be re- really worried if you, if you went alive suddenly in the call. That would be horrible. And people would blame us for it, and then we'd be sued or something. I, I doubt you'd be held liable. We're not even in the same state. Well, you never know. The internet is kind of crazy. Unless you have some kind of weird viral thing that travels through the phone and turns me into a zombie or something. <laughs> Which is well, plausible within the realm we're talking about. That's true. Well, talking about the internet, though, are there any places where the fans can interact with you? Do you do Twitter, Facebook, website, anything like that? I do the Facebook, and uh, also my website is entropyx.net. Very nice. So I'm sure you'll get some stock. I'm working on that I hold dear to my heart. Oh, really? Go there and like like all the pages. <laughs> Could you elaborate? There's a, couple on... pages. There's a couple pages there. I got some anime stuff on there. I've got some uh, some live action stuff I've done. 
and uh, also the project I'm working on, which is Entropy X, which is the world's first LEED Platinum Certified Entertainment Incubator in Houston, Texas. Incubator. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Could, mm-hmm. could you explain more about what, what that is exactly for the listeners? Well, exactly what it's going to, what I, what I envision it to be uh, in its final stages will be a 650-seat theater, a 350-seat nightclub and dinner theater, along with um, hotel suites for both uh, talent and uh, clients who want to stay there, uh, studio space for visual artists, studio space for recording artists, and um, then schools to support all of the functions within the building, including uh, like the, the acting school, the music school, culinary school, uh, you know, uh, hotel management type school, then also there's going to be a research facility adjacent to it for uh, building of uh, green environmental design as well as um, looking into the relationship between light and sound with the eventual goal of eliminating the body mic altogether. That is some hardcore, heavy-duty research you've done there. <laughs> that was my elevator speech, and that's, that's what I've gotten it down to. So if you guys want to help me out with any of that stuff, you know, please contact me. Let me know what, what, what's possible. Well, it definitely sounds interesting, and I hope that we see it come to light one day. Thank you. I'm hoping to at least get the first phase started this year, sometime later this year with the uh, purchase of a, a small property uh, right here in Houston. Now are, there any, the now, are there any other projects that you're working on that you can talk about or anything that's recently come out that you'd like the listeners to know about? Uh, animal, anime wise, no, uh, I just got a call from them and I'm going to be recording for something this week, but I'm not exactly sure what the title is or what my character will be. Well, that's okay. We'll keep updated on your doing, uh, I am doing, uh, some theater though out in Brenham, Texas. I'll be doing, uh, the Fantastics. I'll be playing the role of Mortimer in that. And I'm also hoping to do another role at Theater Under the Stars here in Houston, uh, following that in Festival of Warhouse in Texas. And now do you have any conventions where the fans can meet you in person planned for 2012 or not yet? Uh, I haven't heard anything. Most of the conventions uh, don't call me. <laughs> you have to be like, hey, I'm here. I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I, do I need to do that? Is that my fault? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because... I guess I'm just, not that, I'm just not that out there saying, hey, I'm, you know, the world's best voice actor or anything like that. So... <laughs> Well, it's funny because you have like the con circuit, like the con circle of people who go to like every single convention, and yes, it feels yes, like Chris Patton, yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like the conventions kind of just feed off of that. So, to, I feel like in a way to even be in the circle at all, you kind of have to inject yourself into the mind of the convention and be like, "Hey, I exist. If you want me." Just to, Well, just yeah, say. I've got lots of. I mean, I've got so many friends here in Houston. I was at the comic last year's Comic Palooza. And, you know, that was a last-minute thing. I was actually there for two different things that I was working on. I was there for uh, High School of the Dead, and then I was there for um, something else that I was working on called um, Morgenstein, which is a live-action uh, updated version of Frankenstein, I guess, that takes place in England, which was kind of interesting. It was fun to do. It was just a little bit part for me, but uh, a lot of uh, John Grimion, if you're familiar, if your fans are familiar with him, was was in it, as well as a couple other uh, voice actors that I know, as well as live action actors. Very cool. I, we actually got to talk to him, I believe. I I could be wrong. I believe last year. John. Yes, it's been, it's been quite yeah. a while, so I'm not sure if yeah. it was last year or the tail end of 2010. And then I'm also I'm also working on a, a new project with my friend John Swayze. Uh, it was an idea for a cartoon that I came up with uh, almost ten years ago. Jeez, I can't believe it's been being kicked around that long. But it's called Blue Hair and Baked Alaska, and it takes place in a uh, dinner theater that burned down here in Houston uh, a couple years ago, where I actually met my wife. <laughs> well, that sounds fun, though. It'll be like, uh, what I thought it as is The Simpsons meets The Larry Sanders Show. <laughs> if, if anybody remembers that. I can see how that'll be entertaining. And I'm sure the listeners, 
are are interested to hear about that and to keep updated with that. So we'll make sure that to stock your Facebook, and I'm sure that the listeners are already going to friend you. Sounds great. Awesome. And since we're nearing the end of this interview, I was wondering if you'd be willing to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. Uh-oh. Yes, this is, this is always very dangerous for you. Uh, uh, no, you, you don't get hurt. Okay. <laughs> okay. We just ask if you'd be willing to do a radio bump for us. A radio bump for you. Sure, I could do that. The trick of it, however, is that we do the takes live on air, so everybody hears your mess-ups. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How is that tricky? Well, for some people it is. Okay. Yeah, but so what, but, do you wanna, what, do you, what, what do you need from me? Basically, we ask if you'd be willing to say, hello, my name is, you insert your name, I do this, you can say you're a voice actor, you can say what characters you do, anything you want to put there, and you're tuned into 91.8, The Fan. All right. So whenever you're ready, we're recording. Whenever I'm ready. All right, okay, should I, <clears throat> should I add the ball pain at the end? <laughs> if you really want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, hey, if I got to do my specialty, I got to do my specialty. All right. This is Mark Laskowski, voice actor extraordinaire, also awarded the Awesome Actor Award of 1997 by Stephen Foster. You're listening to 91.8 The Fan live. Ow! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure when it was going to be over, so I was covering my mouth. I was like, that sounds bad. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? Just thanks for listening. And we'll Hope make sure to, see to you someday. We'll make sure to keep updated on all your stuff and thank you for this fantabulous interview. Wonderful. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. And for anybody out there that missed any of this interview, shame on you, but don't fret. It'll be up on the website within the next few days, so keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.